Hello. There is not much to see from over here. What I'm going to do today is open up a Commodore 64 keyboard and clean it and put it back together. Now, ugh, I will need my solder iron. It is not preheated. And, but the reason I have this timer here is I do want to see how long th this will take because I'm just looking for somewhere to put the screws into. The, um, as I was saying not long ago, Bill Hurd broke a, uh, broke the keyboard on a VIC-20, and I said, well, it shouldn't take all that long. But of course, it's just a matter of finding the time. So, there, I can put the screws in there. So, what I'm going to do is, as quickly as possible, go from start to finish, with the end result, of course, being a keyboard that is perfectly happy and wonderfully and working. So, I'm about to press start, and from that moment on, I will go. Go, 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 go. So the keyboard is in a good position. Um, I'm not going to do anything to make it any easier. I'm going to press on the, the trigger on the solder iron at the same time I press start. So, for those that are not aware, Maybe, do I have to switch hands? No, I think I... Uh, 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 anyway, the shift lock is the only key that requires any sort of soldering attention. So I'm waiting for the iron to heat. And it is not yet. It is plugged in, though. Oh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> uh, that will certainly slow the progress. The soldering iron, which I now have to find the cord for, excuse me, is not plugged in. So, okay, now we have, so, Let's just stop that for a moment. Reset. Okay, so we shall begin again. The soldering iron is plugged in. At the same moment I push it, I will push record. Here we go. All right, now these generally, this is a weller, and generally they heat up pretty fast. And what basically has to happen yeah, maybe I'm going to switch hands here. Is... Ugh. Come on, Cord. You have to heat up the solder and give this wire a little pull. There we go. There we go. Come on. Okay, let the games begin. So... Put that down carefully as it is hot and commence with the screws. There are many little screws. Many. I don't know exactly that one. Two. Three. I have not lost that one. It has fallen down into the case. I do not want to lose any. And some of them, I have not done anything to make this faster. Some of them are blocked off by the tape around. Oh, it's stuck on the end of the. Oh, that could have been bad. A screw stuck on the end of the screwdriver. I thought it had not. 
I could have just as easily have dropped it. I have not been counting. There are a lot of screws though. screws are done, except for the ones that are uh, underneath the plastic, which is another little chore to deal with. So I see on the timer so far, we are at... Three minutes and ten seconds, okay, so into the plastic we go. And I think there's just two more. Basically you just skewer the plastic. And rescue the screw. So I think that that is it. And there is the circuit board. Now, before... Oh, <laughs> I must be careful because now all of these plungers would want to come out. I just want to rescue that one screw, which I have done. But if you turn the keyboard over now, you could be in a world of hurt. So, typically, all that is required now, if you take your uh, rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip, and you apply it to every single contact on the board, I am going to do about five at a time and then get more alcohol because as I was saying another time I tried to do this worried about time um, I got the keyboard back together and it didn't really work that well and if you're going to do that, well, what's the point? So what happens is, of course, with these, over time, there can be, it's almost, well, almost microscopic corrosion. Now, this is not exactly in terms of what Bill Hurd is up to, or might be up to, what he has to do. Although, if you've got a keyboard apart, why wouldn't you clean it? He broke a couple of stems. Which, um, need to be replaced. And it's funny, as I do this, I can see on the contacts, they're just not as shiny and beautiful as they should be. Oh, they are just not. So this does seem to have a way of making them much happier. Do, 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 do. 
Yes, I can see a difference in the contacts already. They look rather dull on the up up here where I have not done this. And very, very shiny down below. I don't know if there's a better way, whether it be back and forth, or circular, or what, I just don't know. Because the rubbing alcohol, ooh, my neck, does a lot of what's going on here. And then it gets the microscopic sludge off. But don't ever discount the value. Sort of like a vacuum cleaner that just sucks, and one with a brush that beats the dirt loose. The beater is very valuable. It is. More alcohol. Now, from what I know, what I have done, I have done all the contacts. They do look much, much shinier than they were, I think. I'm going to load up another Q-tip and just give everything one last go over. Looking for any that don't look shiny as can be. And I think I'm running out of alcohol. Alright, this goes back to speed is wonderful, but if the keyboard isn't going to work afterwards, what's the point? Okay, so I'm watching that to dry. Now, another thing that comes to mind is, I'm just going to set this aside for a moment, is really there are two parts to all of this. There is the board, and there are the keys. The little rubber pads. So, even though this will take more time, I'm going to apply alcohol to all the rubber pads. to be very careful not to hurt any or pull any out. But once again, this goes along the lines of if you're going to do it, in the end, you want the keyboard to work. So what's the point? I mostly, in the past, have found um, that this extra step on all the pads is generally not so critical.
but I was kind of irked when I did the VIC-20. It was an original pet VIC-20 keyboard and it didn't really work well because I think I tried to squeeze too much alcohol out of each swapping thing here. What's the point? Now you must be careful of course. If you should pick up the keyboard right now and flip it over. Um, all, or no, you know what, with all the keys on, they should not fall out. I guess I could pick it up. But am I going to? No. I am not. No, I am not. But if I was going to do what Bill Hurd needs to do, because of the broken keys, actually the ones with the broken stems would fall out nicely because of course there's nothing to hold them. And then, once you're at that stage, you need to put fresh stems in. Oh, I don't think I did the space bar. You need to put fresh stems in and then put, uh, of course, the spring and put the key back on. So, do I have to do that? No. I don't. Why? Because, well, because nothing is broken of that nature. So, I think, I'm just going to look at this and see in the light if I see any that look like they could use a little more. And maybe maybe there is. You were just thinking maybe I should have had Flight of the Bumblebee playing through this. Maybe. Okay, so the keyboard is clean. I see. The nice thing about the alcohol, well, I should put the lid back on, is it it vanishes and evaporates. So we're going to put this down, and not because I need to take a break, but because, and I'll, this camera will record this. I'm afraid that this camera is running out of time on this. So, I'm going to press lap. Ah, that wasn't what I had in mind. Uh, well, I guess it is. Anyway, I don't want to. I wonder if I press stop. 1540. Is it going to go again? It keeps going. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so I wasted a few seconds there. It is time. Press start and very carefully as to not drop any screws, put them back in. I think I will start with this one. This should tell me if I'm lined up. Well, I seem to be. I am very, very leery of dropping any of the screws. And I should have counted them. And you know what? I know how many there are. But I don't remember now. I do not. It's 31, 33, something of that nature. I'm, I'm also quite concerned. This is the one I dropped before. And it does seem to be sitting 
Oh, a little funny. What's going on? Don't mess with me. So I seem to have everything lined up well. I'm tempted, of course, to put the screws in and then do all the screwing. But I'm always nervous that if I should bump something, things are going to fly out. And that. But then the screws will fly out and then I will be missing something. Now, what I should be able to do, because I have found some editing software, but I won't work with that camera, I should be able to edit these two files from my Sony DSLR together into one. So, da -da 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 -da. now I'm going to try even though I don't have to get, I'm going to go into the plastic. All right. And so far, so good. Once again, I meant to count. Ooh, no, you don't. I meant to count the screws. Uh, okay. Fatigue is setting in. Also, I see the time pressure. I'm trying to, even though I did leave some of the lights off in here because I found I've got I have to get some more LED lights because I've got a couple of those big. Porch things of old, and it gets hot. It gets hot. But I am kind of in the dark. But I'm lit well here. All right. We're in the home stretch now. But of course, it won't be done until the wires are soldered. It will not. It's funny, there's also, there's little dark things on here that are not holes. I think they are just meant to, to confuse me. No. I can't see. Ugh. Right in the corner. Causing me grief. Okay, we're in. We're in. 
Alright, so now that is good. That is handy. So now, and I had not thought of this, but this is going to get hot. Oh dear. Okay, soldering iron on. I'm going to have to do this quickly. So basically, there are holes here. And the solder is hot, and I missed the hole. Okay, let's try the other one. Okay, I think that one went in. And that one did not. Oh, great. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Okay, so that's in. So let us stop that for a moment. Twenty-three minutes. Thirteen point eight seconds. I have done a little melting on the plastic there. That is not what I had in mind. Oh well. So twenty-three minutes, thirteen seconds. Point eight. With what other um, dicking around we had there. So, they're all tight. They're all dandy. We're going to set this here for a second. We're going to get this somewhat original. Commodore 64. Going to move the uh, Ooh, rubbing alcohol. Going to plug in the monitor. Going to turn on the monitor. And we'll turn on the monitor over here. Get everybody over here, even though I said there isn't, there isn't much to see here. There really isn't. So, you know what? Maybe. Turn the big cooking lights back on. Okay, so the 64 should come up. And it does. So I'll turn it off. Give it a shake test. Give it a look. I'll set it down carefully. Looking up. The power supply, sorry, not sorry, the keyboard and the LED. And this cord is in the way. And then we will flop this down. And turn it on. So, up it comes. First thing I'm going to do. Oops. What happened? There we go. There is no tape to be loaded. Let's try it. A, B, C, D, E, F. Oop, hang on. Ay, 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 E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, D. X, Y, Z. A, B, C, D, 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 D. Looks good. Let's try the numbers. The two is pestering me. Damn. Maybe it's still a little wet. Good. Shift. Mm 
Um, shift lock. Yep. Shift. Oop. Shift run stop. Yep. Can we change the cursor color? Yes, we can. So. I want to delete. Eee. Well, I think we have success. Considering that before, um, like, how many of these, uh, very few of these keys would even respond at all. Funny, this keyboard at the top of it, it looks very pretty. It does. There is a crack in the case, unfortunately. But there. We have success. So, now that... Um, I could have done better. It's been a while. But, uh, I'll send this out there and tell Bill Heard that basically, well, to take the, to take the keyboard apart and put it back together, you know, the 23 minutes or so. Oh, I see on this camera we're up to 34 minutes, but we can start right away. But anyway, I suppose, to be fair, um, you know, from this, from actually opening up the machine and all, we take a little untesting, etc. We take it. So I'm saying, I'm going to tell them, you know, if you've got half an hour and you've got everything sitting right handy and everything ready to go. You can get this. Also, of course, in his case, he's got to have the extra, um, the extra plungers and parts handy, so he can put them in. Anyway, considering all things, not bad, not bad at all. Um, I'm pretty pleased. I wish this machine. This is the machine that is not mine that I've been working on. I wish it didn't have this here. I wish it did not. It is a crack. But otherwise it looks very nice. And But the board is remarkably old. So, um, I guess we can reset to zero and say we're done. I guess, um, and next morning I was looking at the case inside and indeed um, the wood screws are there because some of the plastic inside is really kind of gone. Anyway, let's go shut off camera B.